to stay stay level headed, stay grounded. Yeah. That's that's one that I always I'm always reminded of. When you lose yourself, you lose ground, then you know everything starts falling and crumbling down. My advice to my clients and also to other people in my life uh, would be to keep it simple. Some sometimes things are more easy than you think, and then you can. <clears throat> Yeah, you can imagine. I had what I call a second father figure, and that was Paul Bocuse, um, very you know, reputable chef. And uh, he taught me that whatever success you have in life, you always need to stay well grounded and never forget the people around you. Uh, without a team, you will achieve very little. And I have made this a mantra of my professional career. One would be Thomas Keller, and the other actually is uh, Ferran Adria. <laughs> well, Chef Thomas Keller is uh, someone I, I draw a lot of inspiration from, you know, for, for what he has done uh, for especially with, with the French Laundry and also what he has actually um, shaped uh, the American uh, dining scene, you know, especially. Uh, I, I think what he has done has been phenomenal. Uh, there are so many things that I would like to you know, have the opportunity to sit down and just have a conversation and find out about about his entire journey, you know. Ferran Adria was, I mean, he's, He's a legend, so yeah, definitely so many things to ask about about his uh, his thoughts, about his his uh, views about cuisine, about dining, and how because of his movement, his you know, or because of El Bui, uh, it has it has changed the whole entire landscape and and uh, put Spain on the on the world map, you know, for for the dining, the dining scene. And well, I think the last 10 years, I told people around me and my family that um, I would love to have like a bed and breakfast one day, maybe in an ancient castle in the south of France or something. And um, I would be the chef then because I, I love to cook. Uh, I'm not a chef, but I love to cook, and my motto is keep it simple, it won't surprise you. Um, and I also like to, to construct things and like be the handyman, uh, do things in the building like that. So that's also my, my the reason for choosing like an ancient building or an ancient castle. My favorite food cities are Chicago. Uh, Lyon, that comes a little bit with my upbringing, uh, and then uh, Berlin uh, is a very eclectic city. Chicago is, um, you know, is I call it the cosmopolitan food city and with all different influences, a, a little bit more grounded than, for example, uh, San Francisco or the West Coast, uh, very international uh, and a plethora of, of um, just passionate um, restaurateurs. Uh, Berlin, uh, anything goes. Um, it can be, um, it's a little bit out there and crazy. I, you know, I, I partially live in Berlin and I enjoy exploring the city again and again. And it is, um, has quite uh, very interesting, very interesting trends. But Leo is, um, is, is, is very, is different types of food, but in a very good um, French home cooking. Yeah, it's close to my heart. One of the most exciting and memorable experience I ever had was uh, I was stuck. I was stuck in the forest in Sabah, which is which is in Borneo. You know, the our uh, East East Malaysian uh, state. 
uh, for almost a month. I was uh, in touch with the, the local natives and the local people staying in the forest. And, uh, and they would actually cook daily, you know, whatever produces or whatever catches they, they managed to, to harvest or to, ca- to get from this, the, the, the forest or from the, from the uh, river, you know. Basic, but yet uh, wonderful, very wonderful flavors and textures. And you just, I just, I don't think I'll be able to use words to describe my experience. I really love Italian cuisine. Uh, you can wake me up for a pizza. If you order, like for example, a pasta in the Netherlands, it's, it has like 25 ingredients. Um, and if you order a, a pasta in, in Italy, it's, it has maybe four or five ingredients and all the flavors are, and the textures, they're all perfect. I, uh come across as a, a generally with having a very hard shell, but um, I have an extremely soft core. I really enjoy the success of others to the point that it makes me cry. Such sentimental parts are not generally, generally attributed to me. I enjoy standing on the bottom of a podium and applauding the team uh, which has uh, achieved something. I, uh, I really, uh, that's why I come to work is uh, you know, when you come to a certain age, it's, um, I don't want to say I have nothing left to prove, but I, I in, really enjoy applauding the, the uh, team success.